Today, I'm sharing my top five tips on how to save as a law student. My name's Andrena. I'm a practicing attorney in the DC area, and I was once a first generation student struggling to get through college, law school, and basic adulting. Now I'm using this platform to share tips and tricks to make life easier for you. Last week, I shared my top 10 tips about how to get free things as a college student. I'll leave a link above and below in the comments to that video because honestly, a lot of the advice I gave last week is generally applicable to law students as well. For example, as a law student, it's still important to try to utilize the free resources in the law library. In addition to being able to check out textbooks and study guides, some law schools actually now have free subscriptions to Quimby. Quimby is an amazing resource that I used when I was a law student, but I paid for it at the time. It's a website that has a bunch of case briefs that are key to some of the most popular textbooks in law schools. Um, pretty much any textbook you're gonna have in your one curriculum is gonna be on Quimby. I found the case briefs to be super easy to read and usually help me get by in class. And the fact that schools, like I know Northwestern, Yale are paying for it is amazing because otherwise it's pretty expensive. Moving on to law school, one of my biggest pieces of advice are to take advantage of the Lexis and Westlaw events on campus. For those of you who don't know, Lexis, Nexus, and Westlaw are two legal research platforms that you will almost certainly be using in law school and in practice, particularly if you're a litigation associate. Both companies send representatives to host events on campus. At these events, you will almost certainly get free food, but that's not actually the best part, getting trained on practical skills for how to use both these platforms. You also get other free incentives. So for one of the law event, I remember once I got a $50 Amazon gift card. For the Lexus events, you accumulate these Lexus points every single time that you go to one of these events or do a Lexus workshop online. And eventually you're able to redeem these points. But you know, setting the free stuff aside, you're still getting good training and learning practical tips about how to use both these platforms. And that's gonna make you look more prepared when you go on to your summer jobs. Also pro tip, once you're actually in practice, especially if you're at a law firm, it's still a good idea to make friends with the Lexus or Westlaw representative that's assigned to your particular law firm. Something that a lot of people don't know is there are some firms that do bill clients for legal research. For those type of clients, you have to be really cost effective on type of searches that you do, which isn't always easy to do when you're a new associate. Usually when you speak to one of the representatives from Westlaw or Lexis and you go to one of their office hours, which is pretty much just sending them an email with a question, they'll give you a free promo code that lets you do pretty much unlimited research for 24 hours and none of that gets charged back to the firm. So if you're working on a really difficult legal issue, reach out to them, ask them a question about how they may think to formulate a search. Sometimes they actually come up with a pretty good first search for you. And then they'll give you on top of that, that free promo code. And then you can you know, research freely without having to be worried about racking up costs. Um, it takes a lot of the pressure off when you're a junior associate. Next, perks from bar prep companies. It's no surprise that bar prep is very expensive. So some of the major companies, particularly Barbary and Themis, try to give out free resources to law students in order to entice them to eventually purchase their bar prep programs. So for example, one free perk that both companies give is free preparation for the MPRE. For those of you who don't know, the MPRE is the professional responsibility test that you have to take while you're in law school before you're able to be licensed in your respective state. It is different than the bar. Um, it's actually administered through a completely different organization. It's not nearly as difficult as the bar, but it is something that you have to study for. So I know in the case of both Themis and Barbary, they not only give you a free study guide, but they'll actually give you free lectures that you can watch that are similar to the format for their bar prep classes. And they'll give you a bunch of practice questions. These are very useful for practicing for the MPRE. Um, and I encourage you to take advantage of it. If you go to a law firm after graduation, it's more likely than not that your, that your large law firm will pay for your bar prep classes. But if you are, if you know you're going to be pursuing public interest, or if you're going to be going to a firm that does not cover bar expenses, one way to get free bar prep is by being a bar representative for Barbary 
Themis or one of the other companies. This usually requires you to table a couple of times um, during the semester to promote the bar prep company. And I know there are certain obligations that you have to meet, but the end result is that you get a free bar class. These bar classes are super expensive. I think last time I checked, Barbary went up to $3,000. Also pro tip, there are organizations that offer scholarships for students pursuing public interest careers to help defray the cost of bar exam expenses. I'll leave a link to one below, Change Lawyers, which is specific to California, but I would honestly also look to your local bar associations or affinity groups in your region because I know, for example, in the Southern California region, the Latina Bar Association offers a bar scholarship. Also, if you're going to be doing an unpaid externship at a public interest organization over the summer, I encourage you to seek out grants for the, your summer experience. A lot of the individual law schools will have what's called a public interest fund where they're able to allocate a couple of thousand dollars to students over the summer to help cover housing and you know basic living expenses over the summer. It's not nearly enough, um, particularly if you're in a high cost of living city and working there over the summer. I've seen a lot of students miss out on the opportunity to take advantage of these grants because they don't meet the requirements. A lot of the times there's an application process, there might be letters of recommendation that you need to get. I know at my law school, there was a service hour requirement, so you actually had to contribute to the fundraising efforts um, for the for our pill fund. These requirements tend to catch some students by surprise, and as a result, they miss out on the opportunity to get a couple of thousand dollars in funding, so I don't want you to be in that position. Next, take advantage of law firm events and scholarships. Various law firms will host events both on and off campus to introduce students to their firms. But really these events are crucial for students, particularly first generation students. There are also some law firms that offer pretty lucrative fellowships to students from underrepresented backgrounds in the legal profession, particularly underrepresented in large law firms. Like I said, these fellowships are very lucrative. At the firm I used to work at, it was $50,000. That's $50,000 on top of the almost $43,000 you're already making as a summer associate. In my next video, I'm gonna go in depth about my process for securing a job in big law. Normally you get a big law job during this process in the fall called on-campus recruitment, which occurs the fall of your TLA year. I actually dropped out of my OCI because I was able to secure my big law job offers before stepping back on campus. So I'll go in depth about what you can do in the summer to possibly get a job before OCI. If you're interested in hearing more about that topic, subscribe to my channel and watch next week. And my last piece of advice is to take advantage of free memberships at bar associations. Most national and local bar associations will offer free membership to law students. My recommendation is to sign up for as many of these bar associations as you can, as long as they're applicable to you and free. As a law student, you are very busy you don't have time to go to a lot of events. And I'm not asking you to go to every single one of the events for all of these organizations, but I am saying you should get on the email list and you should attend some events. The email lists are important because you can find out about new job opportunities that way, as well as scholarships that that local bar association may have, or even grants for students who have graduated and are studying for the bar. And the events, the events can be life-changing. I mentioned earlier that I did not do on-campus interviews because I had secured job offers in big law before I even returned back to campus as a 2L. It's not an exaggeration to say that most of the offers I was able to secure were as a direct result of attending some of these bar association events over the summer or in the spring of my 1L year. Like I mentioned, I will go more in depth about my process for securing a big law job in my next video. But for now, those are my tips on how to get free stuff as a law student. If you enjoyed this video, please like below and subscribe to my channel. And if there are any other law students that you think may benefit from this video, please feel free to share it with them. See you next time.